brought to you by Prescient Investment Management. Informed by science, guided by insight. Prescient Investment Management is an authorized FSP. Welcome to a very special episode of uh, of Honest Money. We've got one of my all-time favorite guests, uh, repeat guests now, uh, back on the show, Finance Ghost. Thanks so much for joining us. Thank you, Warren. It's good to be here, even though we're both trying very hard not to laugh at what just happened one second before we pressed the record <laughs> button. Hopefully my cat will forgive me after this. I just have to give some context there to Finance Ghost's uh, comment. We're b- busy setting up the, the, the environment in his, where, where he's recording and he had, he's having a bad morning and he's sick and, and, uh, and having a tough, uh, tough patch and he then stands on the cat and unfortunately the, the cat's fine now, but, but wasn't happy with, with well, Finance we, we, assume, we assume the cat's fine. The cat is now in a different postal code. I've tried to look for him twice. Um, I'm sure he will make me pay for it later. I mean, it was actually just such a comedy of errors. I realized it was dark because I hadn't put the lights on yet because I assume there's no electricity. So I'm blaming ESCOM on this one. Took a big step backwards to quickly turn the lights on before we started. And there was Sweet Bentley sitting behind me, lovingly purring, and I stood in his tail. So <laughs> it's almost a little bit sad that we don't have the sound bite from it because it was quite spectacular. I'm certain he's fine, uh, probably hiding in the cupboard, and I'll go make it up to him just now. Anyway, the show must go on. So let, let's hit it. We're, we, um, the, the reason that I wanted you to come on the show was we, we've we've kind of been through a patch of of stocks being hyped on on social media all around the world. I, and I, I think it's a mistake to think that this is a South African issue. I think it's a global issue. Uh, and you know, just going through the whole of COVID, uh, you, you know, where, where social media really drove up uh, prices of shares. You know, I, I think you know kind of ridiculously uh, and and then you know that most of those shares if not all you probably will know better than me but I, I'm, I'm pretty sure all of those shares are are back at, at their pre-hyped levels or, or possibly below and, and then we had a, a ETF uh, or ETF provider but actually an asset manager by the name of Kathy Wood um, using her serious media profile uh, to, to launch an ETF um, I think it's called the ARC Innovation Fund, if I remember correctly. And uh, and again, just absolute, you know, massive hype, uh, you know, using a brand, a very strong media and social media presence and and running up a, a price of investment uh, at th- that is now, you know, deep underwater. I'm not, I'm not convinced that, uh, you, you know, that investors re- will, who bought at the peak will recover those losses in the next multiples of years. Forget about months. Uh, and, and South Africa is the same. We've got we've got you know shares that are much loved on you know uh, by retail investors. Uh, you know, and those those shares get hyped both by the companies themselves. I don't think they're as guilty of it, but definitely by the companies. And then social media influencers uh, who push these prices up, and then those prices fall over. And I, I think it's costing people a lot of money. Uh, it is. I agree with absolutely all of that. And of course, we had the influencers at the same time that macroeconomic conditions were wonderful for equities. Not by accident. I think one causes the other. I think what happens is the the prices go mad. Interest rates were these insane lows. And then, of course, everyone is a stock picking genius, right? Because everything's going up. So that rising tide lifts all boats and a whole bunch of influencers come out of the woodwork and everyone is an expert. I mean, I think one of the images that will stay with me forever was, you know, shall we say an adult industry performer holding a Benjamin Graham book as a picture on Twitter. And it was obviously done very tongue in cheek. But I remember that going around, you know, the intelligent investor being held by, you know, effectively this OnlyFans star. And that was just peak, peak COVID, macroeconomic craziness, stimulus, everything, all of it in one picture. It was fantastic. And and I think I mean you're talking about influences, and I think maybe it's um, you know it's, I mean people could could accuse me of bringing you on the show, and they're going to say, but you know, but Finance Ghost is an influencer, and and so maybe just for me to say the the reason why Finance Ghost is on the show, and and not a bunch of other people with much bigger followings, and that's an important point, Twitter followings. Uh, the reason why I'll bring Finance Ghost onto Honest Money is he starts life understanding numbers, understanding spreadsheets doing years and years of research into how businesses work, what are the differences between good businesses and bad businesses, and then starts to publish that information for people to consume. Uh, and that causes him to get a following. What we've, And to me, I think people that start with that, with a deep understanding and an area of expertise built on proper research, 
I, I want those people to get a following. I want those people to be listened to and followed. And and so I'm going to stop there uh, because I haven't said it. Uh, you know, if if you're interested in shares and you want to get proper in-depth research, uh, Finance Ghost also got a, a, a podcast, Magic Markets, and I, and I think it's really worth uh, subscribing to. I think it's something that if you if you want to get quality information, uh, and he's not just there to hype something up. Sometimes he's uh, shooting the companies down that are behaving badly or, or performing badly. More often, more often than not, I think, Warren. Sometimes I feel like I must irritate people, but investing is about saying no, right? Yeah. I and mean, you know this. People don't understand this. Investing is about saying no. Unless interest rates are at nothing, in which case you can just say yes to everything. You know, then you can throw darts and you can go bananas and you'll make money. But otherwise, investing is about saying no, not about saying yes. And, and, and I think there, the, the, the thing that bothers me and the thing that I, that I want to get off my chest, I'm on my soapbox today, uh, Finance Coast, is people that focus on being controversial, people that focus on, on building a Twitter profile through, you know, like whatever it is, whatever the fashions and the trends are, they're there. And they're loud and they're, you know, in your face and they're, you know, purposely controversial. They're building Twitter following for their their own agenda. And and I think it's an important point. You know, uh, I mean, I'm still old school. So so I would say the same about the people that are writing articles, uh, you know, saying disinvest from South Africa and cash in your retirement funds. Uh, and, you know, th- th- those dinosaurs are still doing that. But in the modern kind of uh, social media world, you know, it's happening on TikTok. It's happening on on, on many mul- multiples of social media platforms. People are being controversial to get a following to then do something for themselves. They launch a company. They launch a product. They're selling a smart whatever it is product or flipping what is it, what is it power energy drinks whatever like absolute garbage. Uh, and then somehow it relates to money, and we follow them because they they have a big following not because they're market geniuses. And what's really bothering me is some of those people are getting ranked now in, in these kind of r- rankings of, of analysts uh, as, as analysts. And, and I know for a fact they're not. I know for a fact they're, they're, they're a salesman. Uh, and and so so be careful here. I think it's important when we're talking about this stuff and we're, we're you know focusing on individual shares. If you're not going to be in the space of buying an index or buying a unit trust that buys shares, if you're taking the decision to buy shares for yourself, well done. I'm not discouraging you. What I'm saying is choose your sources of information carefully. Yeah, I guess you know it's it's obviously it's it's very kind what you're saying about what I've done. I was yeah, imposter syndrome is probably my middle name. When I'm not busy standing on my cat's tail. But uh, I think the point here is that there's a difference between marketing pros and market pros, if that makes sense. And you've got to be careful to distinguish between the two. And I think, look, it's a hell of a skill to build a really big following, to know how to write stuff in a way that gets the retweets and gets the attention. You know, it's a skill in and of itself, but it definitely doesn't make you a good investor necessarily. And it also doesn't mean that the people following actually have the firepower or for that matter, the willingness to actually put their money behind a particular idea. You know, often it's it's a bit of a misleading number, you know, how many Twitter followers or how many Facebook followers or how many followers on LinkedIn. That means nothing. It all depends on how much, you know, actually the investment firepower is in that audience and what they're willing to do with it at the end of the day. That's what really counts. I think one of the proudest moments on my journey was in Ghost Mail one morning. There was an orphanage near my house where their charity shop had been broken into. It was on Freedom Day. I mean, seriously, most South African story ever. And I think I mentioned it in Ghost Mail that morning and just asked, listen, like, I, I never ask people to pay for Ghost Mail. It's been free since I launched. It will always be free. You know, if you've ever wanted to pay me for something, I'd rather do this. And I think we raised 80,000 Rand by like 8.30 a.m. that morning, which Whoa. was amazing. You know, that was just so cool. And I think it was a reminder of, you know, there's a lot of people reading Ghost Mail who are, are professional investors all the way down to students who are taking things very seriously. And goodness knows I don't have all the answers. And I definitely don't want this podcast to sound like I'm hyping myself up because that's the last thing we're doing here. Um, but I guess you're right is you've got to be careful like why does someone have a following is it because they make jokes because they are controversial or is it because they are consistent in their view and that's the other point i think you know it's hard to be consistent it really is it's easy to follow the next hype stock you know oh suddenly this week i'm a you know huge fan of luxury goods because i was a genius and i bought it 20 percent ago and look at me no one ever proves these claims you know i'm yeah. very happy to take the losses on the chin you know i lost a lot of money in transaction capital a lot <laughs> You know, and it is what it is. I didn't sell because I didn't want to take the tax knock. I wanted to hang on for the three-year ruling and only pay CGT on it. And I was a few months short. Big, big lesson learned. When something is clearly overpriced, SARS is not in your decision-making tree. You know, sell the thing because it's overpriced. Buy it because it's underpriced. The tax is the tax. That was the learning I took from that. 
you know, and I'm not shy to say it. it. And there's other examples. There's been many mistakes. Alibaba was another one. You know, no one in the market has ever gotten it 100% right. It is impossible. It is absolutely impossible. And I think, uh, you know, some of the, the, the all-time great uh, investors who have very public track records, uh, I mean, you can go back kind of, uh, you know, over 100 years to, to a, a guy called Sir John Templeton, uh, and, and he bragged about his success rate at, at being at, at 51%. And and you know that 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 it it wasn't about fifty one percent of his capital was growing while forty nine percent of his capital was shrinking. It was fifty one percent of his investment decisions were right, forty nine percent of his decisions were wrong. The fifty one percent more than paid for really good success. And 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 being wrong is an absolute reality in the investment world. You know, I think uh, just understanding that is uh, is key. And people who promote themselves as permanently successful look at you know look at i i called this on social media two weeks ago you, you well done you did you, but you probably also called five other things that you've gone quiet about uh, or you just deleted them uh, that that were horribly wrong and and i think for, for me, i don't want the bragging uh, you, you know what you want from from social media are people that are going to educate you people that are going to help you make proper decisions that you make and that's the point here is it's about teaching people to to kind of filter the good uh, from the bad, both the good investments from the bad and also a process of thinking. You can't outsource your entire financial planning to, you know, to, to people on a on a podcast and hope that that's going to work well for you. You are in charge. You run your money. You know, our job is to kind of help you and inform you and and, and help you make better decisions. But that's it. You know, we, if we get it wrong, we, we might be losing money for ourselves. But but we, if, if you get it wrong, uh, you, you know, you might not get to retirement or financial freedom. That Those are big things. Don't be outsourcing that to a social media influencer, please. It's I mean, I, I, I'm sound frustrated and I shouldn't be, but but it feels to me like something we should take really seriously. We should put a health warning on these things, you know, put a health warning on cigarettes. Why are we not putting it on, on social media influencers who start by, you know, expanding on, on financial stuff? It's, it's crazy to me. Yeah, I agree with you. So a couple of points, one on the win rate. So there was a fantastic thread doing the rounds on Twitter at one point about the win rates of top tennis players. Or actually, I think it was, no, it was an article I read. A friend of mine wrote it, I think from Alan Gray, now that I think about it, a friend I know from my days playing tennis. So it makes sense. And it was all about the win rate of these pros and how even the Roger Federer's of this world, et cetera, you know, their win rate is only slightly better than half really. But the point is they won the match points all the time. So on trading or on investing, you know, what the win rate loss rate is not telling you is the size of the position. And that of course is key, you know, big winners, small losers, et cetera, et cetera, depending on your investment philosophy, your trading style, et cetera. You know, those are, those are key metrics. So yeah, it's very much about just being right more than you're on. And it's, it's, that means you've got to be very comfortable with being wrong a lot, actually. And, and a lot of people don't really realize that. And the other point I'll make is people change their minds. Professional fund managers will wake up today with a high conviction view. And next week, Tuesday, they have a different view because they read something this week that changed their mind. And if you're not able to change your mind, you are going to lose money in the markets hand over fist. I can almost guarantee it. So the problem is when people outsource their money decisions to a professional who made one TV appearance and said, hey, I like this stock. Don't make the assumption that that fund manager is going to hold that stock for the rest of his life or her life. It's not going to happen. They like the stock now, today, with the information available right now. Next week, Tuesday, they might not like the stock anymore, but guess what? They're not coming back on TV to tell you that. So what we do in Magic Markets Premium, for example, is we give technical trading ranges and a fundamental view. So the fundamental gives you an idea of where we think this this thing is going directionally over a sort of medium term. And the technicals give you entry and exit points. You know, and, and that's it. We don't go back three weeks later and say, hey, guys, we covered Crocs. You know, guess what? It hits its target because now that's starting to sound like we're holding your hand through the process and giving advice, which we're not. What we're doing is we're sharing our research process and the way we would behave with the information we have. Obviously, we do recap shows every sort of six, seven months on a stock to see how it actually went. But that's what people need to understand is, is the online world of financial analysis is incredibly powerful. It's amazing. It's a gift what we have access to these days, more than ever before in history. But just use it responsibly and just understand that person giving a view has zero obligation to phone you next Tuesday and tell you their mind has changed. It's why I 100% stopped giving any kind of stock ideas to friends because the problem is sometimes you do and then you forget that you've given someone an idea. Now they assume there's almost this like tacit understanding. Oh, you know, if he changes his mind, he'll phone me. It's not because I don't want to. It's just, I can't possibly remember (laughs) with everything else going on with my life, you know? And I, so now I've, I've stopped doing that completely. Even just like chatter around the braai or, 
it's a bit like a comedian. They're not actually funny if you meet them outside of work often. They're actually just very normal people. They're not working. They, they, they take the mask off. You know, when they're on stage, they're on stage. When they're off stage, they're off it. And I've started to sort of take that approach. And I think it's an important point around advice. I mean, you know, free advice is, is often the most expensive advice you can get. Uh, and, and asking an expert on, on shares or on markets or on economies uh, outside of, of their job, uh, when, when maybe they've had a beer or two or they've had a couple of glasses of wine and they're relaxed and they're, you know, they're giving you an answer because you asked them a question. Uh, and and it, they, they might have applied five seconds of thought to it. And, uh, and, and now you go off and you use that and then you hold them to account, uh, you know, uh, you know, one or five years later, because whatever they said after a few, few beers or a few glasses of wine, uh, after five seconds of thought is now gospel and it's gone wrong. Uh, understand free advice is, is the most expensive advice you can get. I think, uh, I think, you know, uh, you know, taking responsibility for your money is, is to me what it's all about. I'm not saying you need to become an expert on every aspect of money, but, but surely, uh, you know, do the homework, do the research and filter, filter the information correctly. And it can't be based on following. It needs to be based on quality of information and, People who tell you the bad as well as the good, I think, are, are really important. So people, you know, fund managers and, 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 and market research people who talk about their losses as much as they talk about their gains, for, for me, it's building credibility because they're, they're, they're telling you the, the true story. The people who only promote how amazing they are and how amazing their picks are, and, uh, you know, I, I just know it's, I know it's nonsense. I know it's garbage. They're, they're hiding a whole other story that, that, that they're not telling you or, or, in fact, they probably do nothing. Uh, and, and they're just, you know, they're just on social media and they invest nothing and they make money from selling you a story and then they sell that to advertisers. And that's lethal. You know, I think be careful there. I think it's, you know, th this money game is, uh, is, is kind of serious, you know, and it's, it's a long term thing. It's not a, you know, three week story, uh, you, you know, and, and just be careful around around how we consume information. Absolutely. And you don't have to look far on Twitter to find someone who's desperately trying to show that they are smarter than you. There's an enormous amount of jealousy in that place. It's unbelievable. So there was a perfect example just the other day. I tweeted something to the effect of, you know, somewhere out there an investor is busy swapping into dollars and buying NVIDIA, you know, at sort of an all-time worst Rand dollar and an all-time high on NVIDIA. And it was just before NVIDIA released results. And then the thing popped another 25% overnight after releasing results. So did that tweet age badly? Obviously, there's a whole you know, group of people just waiting to point out, oh, look how wrong you are. Like, Actually, no, what I said was investor. I have no interest in momentum traders and the like. The guys do what they do. I have a lot of respect for what they do, but they are not the people who get hurt. The people who get hurt are investors who read the hype around NVIDIA. And yes, maybe the thing will keep running. Maybe it will. Maybe AI is going to absolutely take over everything we do and NVIDIA is all that will be left. But I've seen this movie before. I'm old enough to remember when Tesla was valued as though it was going to be the only car on the roads by 2025 and Kathy Wood thought that we would all be, you know, the Jetsons by 2027. It's not real. Sometimes it works. On average, it won't work. So if you're doing the sort of win rate, loss rate, if you're going to buy everything at all-time highs in the hope that it just keeps running, I am reasonably sure that I know where your win rate is going to be and it's not going to be on the correct side of 50%. I don't even think it will be on the correct side of 20% or 30%. So at the end of the day, I've had to learn, you know, you need a very thick skin, as I think you've also learned, Warren, on Twitter and these sort of places. There's always someone who's willing to or keen to show how much smarter they are than you. And for me, it's never been that. It's never been a, an intellectual contest. It's never been about being, you know, more right than the next guy or more wrong than the next guy. It's just about giving a view. And it kind of goes into this melting pot and it helps people think. And at the end of the day, Twitter is, as an echo chamber is incredibly dangerous. Twitter as a place to go and get a whole lot of views, many of which you don't agree with, is the most powerful tool in the world. So, you know, it's, it's, it's almost like a gun. You know, if you use it correctly in a time of desperate need, it can save you. But it can also ruin your life and you have to be very careful. Uh, I, I made peace uh, finance ghost a long time ago with the fact that I'm, I'm not nearly as smart as most people. So, so it's, uh, it, uh, when people point out uh, uh, that, that, that fact to me, it's just conf it just confirms that I'm at least right about one thing. So I'm, I always enjoy that. Uh, and, and I think also just understanding that uh, the, the, um, the, the sources of information to me, we, we should be more careful to read books around, uh, around investing than, than kind of current 
you know, up to the second hype. I think, you know, understanding a, a process of making decisions is important. If you're going to go down this road of, of being an investor and, and choosing shares, whether you're trading, which Finance Coast likes and I, I don't, uh, or, or you're like the 20-year investor, which I am, uh, the, and, and that's all I am, the, then understanding the philosophies behind that and, and developing a way of making decisions built on proper understanding, I, I think is really important there. And, and then using media, social media as, as a way of staying more informed, uh, I think it's a powerful tool there. But but the philosophy of how you make these decisions needs to be yours and it needs to be based on proper theory, not not uh, what, what happened last night and what might happen in the next seven minutes on on some trading platform somewhere. That That's just not a way to make money. No, exactly. And I'm not sure why people assume that markets are easy. You know, you wouldn't wake up tomorrow and assume you're going to play championship rugby by next Saturday. So why do you wake up tomorrow and assume you're going to know everything about the markets because you follow, you know, Trader 96784ZA on Twitter? And that's what this oak has been saying for the past two years. And look, he was always right because, you know, miraculously, no one ever posts about losses. I mean, there's an entire industry of people who have dedicated 10,000 hours and a lot more to getting to this place around these topics. You know, it, it's not easy. <laughs> if it was yeah. easy, then none of these people would have jobs, Right. Yeah, if it was if it were if it was easy, we'd all be uh, we'd all be financially free and sitting on a beach somewhere. Uh, so, so finance coast, we're we're um, we're running out of time. I think we're really over time, in fact. But uh, but I just wanted to to check in with you to see. Uh, I mean, we're we're in a kind of a, a difficult time around the world, uh, and you know, and and we don't know how how everything unfolds from here. But uh, but but people listening to this to say, okay, come on, just just give me one one thing I can take out of this. Uh, looking over the next one, three, maybe five years, are, are we looking at kind of economic devastation around the world? Are we looking at uh, uh, um, kind of, uh, I, I'm, yeah, I think it's maybe just your views broader ra rather than narrower. Yeah, I got it. So it's an interesting question. So look, I personally think that equities are in for a pretty rough ride. When I read Sen's announcements, the amount of positive information at the moment is is few and far between. There are very few companies that are doing well in this environment. Most are really struggling. So I think we have to recognize South Africa's challenges. There's no point in pretending that they're not there because they are there, clearly. Um, you know, the US economy is still an absolute monster, but often the companies are priced for that. Uh, so that's something to keep in mind. I can only share what I've done recently, which is probably quite controversial, or it usually is when it comes to me, but I sold out a whole lot of uh, US tech stocks because they've had such a gigantic run, brought the money back into RANDs because I do think the RAND is oversold. It's being driven at the moment by a lot of sort of geopolitical stuff and you know government stuff. And look, don't get me wrong, it can still get worse. Of course it can get worse. But again, you have to stick to a process. And if you draw a very long-term chart of the RAND, the trend is not difficult to spot. But the incredible swings are also not that difficult to spot. And if you're prepared to do stuff, you know, a little more actively like I am, then you can try and play that and see how it goes. And again, I never do it with all my money. It's a portion of see how it works, learn from it. And what I've been doing as well, which I would highly recommend that anyone looks at right now, is whatever your savings are, just get the maximum yield you can on them. Just look at the notice deposits offered by your bank figure out what your liquidity needs probably are and just build your own little liquidity ladder because interest rates are high at the moment. It is rewarding savers. Everyone is bleating about interest rates and it's the worst thing in the whole world. It's the worst thing in the whole world if you bought a 320i M Sport with your first salary after 30 people told you not to. Now you're going to learn a lesson. Sorry to say it, but you are now going to experience pain. That's how this life works. For those who actually did the, did the right thing, followed the advice, built up some savings, now it's your time. It is your time to shine now. You have got proper interest rates available to you, proper yields available to you. So use them. Don't leave your money rotting in your current account or in a basic savings account with immediate notice if you don't need it. You know, have a look at the sort of interest rates available to you and maximize your yield. And there's lots of ways to do that. And right now, a sort of 9% guaranteed yield versus the JSE. If you ask me which one to choose right now, do I think the JSE is going to do 9% this year? Well, I told you what I did. I put some money into a savings account, didn't I? 
Uh, and and that's uh, that's as current as you can get from 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 my perspective. Always to know that uh, you know when 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 the news is bleak and and the news flow is bleak now and it's bleak everywhere. Uh, it it also tells me that uh, that that people often are overpricing uh, the the bad news and underpricing the the good news. So so I, I have no idea what's going to happen over a year. I'm not brave enough to make that uh, that, that forecast. But I think over twenty years there are probably some great bargains we can have now we can own now uh, and and certainly don't don't be afraid to be a holder of quality investments and and if you've got the capital and and you've got your cash sorted out don't be afraid to be a buyer of quality investments but do it slowly and and you know do it incrementally don't uh, you know don't take big swings uh, with your entire financial future with one call just because i'm saying i think there's good 20 year investment decisions you can phase your money into markets and be patient and and you know and above everything Kind of try and be rational, try and be sensible, and don't be swayed by by emotions. You know, good or bad. I think that's the point. Is at the moment it's probably overhyped on the bad, uh, and and it's understandable. You know, we uh, we we living in uh, in in very tricky times now. But but this too shall pass, and and we need to be on the other side of this as investors, not uh, as manic depressives. Absolutely. And obviously, long-term equity exposure is critical for anyone. You know, anyone you speak to, I mean, Warren, you're the sort of financial expert here, actually, when it comes to wealth creation. You know, I just understand how companies make money and what that means for their share price. At least I like to think so. So, you know, long-term equity exposure is critical, obviously. So this, it's really just a tactical thing. You know, if you just look at your portfolio, the good old balanced fund is a share of fixed income and equities, right, at the end of the day. So when I'm busy putting money into a 9% savings account, that's me building my own little balance portfolio right now. It's a bit more defensive. I'm taking a year of yield. Rest assured, when things look better, the money's going back in the market. You know, I actively manage my money. So it's about quick singles sometimes. You know, when you're facing the fastest bowler in the world, if you try and hit a six, it might end very badly. If you take some quick singles and build up your innings and get to a point where you look back 50 overs later and you've put, you know, 300 on the board, that is, that is investing. And that is, I think, the key thing is understanding the difference between tactics and strategy, short-term and long-term. For those who want to be more active, for those who don't want to be more active, it's all very daunting. It's cool to learn about it, but you certainly don't have to do that. That is the Finance Ghost. We are finished. We've covered investing, cricket, rugby, uh, social media, and and how not to stand on your cat. Yes, exactly. Uh, I appreciate your time. Thank you so much, Finance Ghost. Thank you, Warren. I really enjoyed it. Brought to you by Prescient Investment Management. Informed by science. Guided by insight. Prescient Investment Management is an authorized FSP. 